is just waiting for y'all to do what you do, which is come on in the room so we can do what we do, and that is chop up some good game on these Twitter space streets, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have y'all in here. Welcome, everybody, to my Twitter space. I'm Tariq, for those who don't know. Hope you guys have been having a good week so far, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everything is all good with you. I hope you've been productive this week. I ain't going to be on here too, too long. I'm just doing a tap in, checking on you guys, seeing how you're doing. Just getting stuff ready for the X. FBA Expo going down. What is it? Is it next week or the week after? Let me look at my calendar real quick. Shout out to everybody in the room. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's next week actually. Yeah, it is next week, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. So it's coming up on us, guys. So I hope everybody's getting their plane tickets, train tickets on their way down to Dallas to come join us. It's going to be popping. Going to got a lot of phenomenal speakers. Phenomenal performers. Great Kiki White is going to be doing her thing. Uh, Reza Islam is going to be there. My brother Tudi, Mayad Ra, herbalist, sister Dr. Charm, another herbalist, holistic healer. We got a, we got a, just a grand array of a lot of great things. It's an all day event. It's going to start at 10, probably end at 10 at night. It's going to be all day. You're going to get every dime's worth. Y'all going to be there all day chilling. And we're going to have little breaks here and there where people can go back to the room or whatever to freshen up, especially at night when we do the nighttime stuff. People can go um, go to the room. And if you got kids, you want to kind of drop your kids back off at the room with, with Nana or whoever, you can come on back and do some grown folk stuff. But, you know, everybody is invited at night. It's going to be a great event. Get your tickets at FBAExpo.com. We've got a lot of folks in the room tonight. A lot of people in the room um, at the um, that event that Biden had at Howard. I wanted to touch on that real quick. Um, I talked about this on my broadcast yesterday or Sunday. I, I'm my days are lost. I don't know what day is what. But I talked about Biden being over at Howard University. They let Howard. Uh, they they let Biden speak at Howard and. You know, he was going on the chicken and watermelon tour. And what's interesting, you had some brothers and sisters in the audience who was clowning. They were clowning, and rightfully so. You had some brothers and sisters in the audience. They had on, they had some paperwork, some some stuff on their diploma hats, saying that Biden don't do anything for the black community. And, you know, some people were turning their backs on him. And, um, you know, I take my hat off to them. You know, they, they kind of let the, the real message be known. Now, the mainstream media, they're not reporting on that part of it. But you can see some stuff online. There was a lot of black folks who actually did oppose Biden being there. You know, it was kind of hard on Howard. But it was, I'm reading it now. It said Biden and Harris don't care about black people. And he got a brother with his back turned to him. I like that. Yeah, now I'm going to take some of the stuff I said about Howard University back. I was on Howard's bumper the other day. But, yeah, I see we still do have some riders up there. So shout out to the riders up at Howard University. I got to take some of the criticism back because we're talking about how Howard has become a, a coon factory to a certain degree. But you do still have riders. So, yeah, the, the mainstream media, they're really downplaying the brothers and sisters who got up and turned their backs and had them signs saying Biden don't do anything about black people. Now, as you know, the Democratic shills, and you know what, let me post that in the Jumbotron, if I if I may. Um, let me see. How do I do that? Where am I? Okay, let me post that in the Jumbotron real quick to show y'all what I'm talking about. You have some of the Biden sexuals and the Kamamiites up here trying to cape for Biden. Let me show y'all a tweet. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. Let me put this in the Jumbotron. Um, where are we at? Here we go. All right. I put that in the Jumbotron. 
Now, this is a Biden sexual, this woman here. She's like, to do this at the alma mater of the vice president is wild. I don't mind folks criticizing and holding the Biden-Harris administration accountable, but oftentimes stuff like this doesn't come with any solid evidence. Y'all just repeat what y'all hear on the FN Shade Room and um, gossip blogs that don't know their butthole from a can of pain. Okay, so now this woman is critical saying that there's no evidence that Biden and Harris, their administration, there's no evidence that they didn't do anything for black people. So now she tries to list her sources. And if you listen to my show the other day, it's basically the same gibberish that these Democratic shills, they got some talking points from the head of the DNC because it's basically the same thing. Remember on my show, I was reading off one of these Democratic shills talking about this stuff all this stuff Biden had allegedly done for black people. He's like, yeah, Biden gave $1 billion to black businesses. Biden had helped gave $2 billion to the black farmer. And I, I just meticulously, one by one, point by point, just debunked all of it, just pulled up all the policies they were talking about. And all it was so easy to damn debunk. It was, it was boring. So this woman right here, if you look at her stuff, she's doing the same thing. She's She's going to tout what Biden has done for black people. And here she goes. Executive order on advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities. Come on. We're not doing this no more. Family, they're still trying it. They're still trying the underserved minority disenfranchised code. We're not doing that no more. The, the shills don't have the memo, do they, family? They really don't have the memo. That ain't it no more. We're not doing all of that vague, um, um, jive-ass language. No, 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 no. We're, we ain't even just doing black no more. You better say foundational black American. We're getting hyper-specific about the language now. These people, you see how out of touch they are. These people don't even know what's going on in these streets right now. No, no, we don't play that game no more. Yeah, we already know the trick bag. So, yeah, you better come with right and exact, very direct, very specific language. This ain't going to work. Here you go. I'm, I'm going to read some more what she says. She, Biden urged DOJ to ban choke holes and no-knock warrants. If you, a brother just got killed up here in New York in the Biden administration, they're not doing anything about it. The no-knock warrant thing, they haven't done anything to the killer of Breonna Taylor. She goes on, A.G. Merrick Garland urged to file federal charges related to the death of Breonna Taylor. Go to hell. That dude who killed Breonna Taylor is working for another damn police department right now. These people think that we're stupid. I'm going to read some more. She says he pardoned simple possession of marijuana on a federal level, and that's supposed to be something for black folks. These are talking points handed down from the top brass of the DNC because these shills are using the exact wording with all of this nonsense. Her other talking point, the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill was signed by Biden. And what? He doesn't enforce it. Signing it is one thing. Enforcing it is another. Who in the hell has they, have they enforced that law against? in relation to helping a black person who name one person they've enforced that to they haven't enforced that with anybody they didn't even enforce it on carolyn bryant the person who helped get emmett till killed they didn't even enforce it on her and she has a warrant that they never served yeah she goes on to say the american rescue plan that's a lift all program she says the child tax tax credit that's another lift all program. 11.6 million jobs created black unemployment decreased from 9.4 to 5.4 all cap. Another lift all program. $5 billion to HBCUs. Who's running these HBCUs now? These HBCUs are Tether Palooza right now. It's Tether Palooza. She goes on to say, Inflation Reduction Act, lift all program, K-12 
cap cost of insulin. Well, how's that something for black? This is this is what they're saying is for black people. This is how desperate they are. Canceling student loan debt. Okay, this is how desperate these people are, family. This is ridiculous. Okay, I, I smell mayonnaise in the room. Okay, there's a lot of mayonnaise in here. I can. Let me see what's going on. I'm, I'm smelling mayonnaise in here. Let, let's get some of these folks in here because they're they're in here heavy, atomized. Hop, hop on, man. Atomized, hop on. Oh, hello, Tariq. Great what's, fan. Look, all right. So what's going on? First of all, get get your homeboy out your mouth, and let's talk clear so I can hear you. I want you to enunciate a little better, but you got to get your homie out your mouth. Um, y'all do what y'all need to do after you get off the phone with me. But what's on your mind? I'm starstruck, to be honest. I don't know That's, what to say. Now, what country are you from? Australia. Okay, you sound like Dracula, dude. You sound like a moist vampire. And you don't suck necks. You suck something else. Now, you need to do something about the damn voice. So what's on your mind? I don't know, really. I just came here and uh, came to listen to the wise words of Tariq Nasheed. And, uh, yeah, you've given me the speaker. I really don't know what else to say. All right, all right man. Well, go eat you some croissants. And take your nice, good bubble bath and, and, and get some of the, the stains off you and you'll be good. But thank you so much. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's let's get Lisa, Lisa Jackson in here. That's an old school sister name right there. Lisa Jackson. You're probably somewhere from Alabama or Louisiana somewhere. Lisa. Lisa Jackson. Good evening. How are you? Um, I'm good, I just Lisa. wanted to say, okay, I'm Lisa Jackson. I am from Yonkers, New York. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to ask anybody in the room, um, does it, anybody understand that those HBCU schools that we keep talking about, most of them wasn't even started by us or even funded by us. So that's why I think like a lot of things that's going on in those HBCU schools, um, when you want to talk about um, – people from other countries or even now that they're saying white people can go to these schools. Right. Well, of course they can. They weren't, they weren't even started by us. They were started to separate us from, you know, what was here already, which was primarily white and black people. So, I mean, like I, for me, I don't pay attention to what they do. I look at them as right. cops to me. So, I, I'm just, I, I don't, I just don't find them big on my list. I'm not even shocked that Joe Biden could get, go to. Oh, 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 oh. We, we had some, sorry about that, Lisa. That was a, a white supremacist who just got off the male whole stroll. He was upset because he only made $3 and his mouth is sore and he's projecting. Okay. Sorry about that, Lisa. My my good sister Lisa was talking, and there was a white supremacist on here who um, he came in low on the the payments tonight, so he was a little upset. He was at this slanging bussy, and he couldn't get that rent money like he wanted to, so he was very upset. It's gonna be all right, man. Just go try harder. You can try harder and use knee pads so that you can do your job. Um, speaking of slang and bussy, um, T.S. Giselle, you haven't been on in a while, T.S. Giselle. What's going on, T.S. Giselle? T.S. Giselle? Um, uh-oh, what happened? Okay, I was going, I was going to let you talk, but then you bounced, so, um, hopefully you'll be all right out there in these streets, T.S. Giselle. You are probably with that guy who called, the white man. And you know, fighting over money. Okay. <laughs> Let's get um Levante in here. Let's get Levante. Levante hop in. Levante hop in. Hot week. How are you? Okay. Whoa. Boy, these white supremacists war with these separate phone lines. All right. All right. Where are you on the the male holster with the other guy? Hell yeah. 
Okay, well, look, man, go ahead and y'all get y'all money, man. I know it's slow out there on the track, but damn, it's going to pick up a little bit later. Y'all, y'all just hold out uh, and make the money. Don't let the money make you. All right. All right, T.S. Giselle, did you change your profile picture? T.S., you change your profile? You can hop on, um, Giselle. Hello? Yeah. What's going on, Giselle? Tariq, it's your favorite. You know, Tariq, it's funny that you said, I hope you've been safe in the streets. Tariq, they want me murdered in a ditch in a body bag. Have you heard? Who? Who wants you murdered? One of your Giselle? mutual enemies. No, no. We no. have a mutual who is, enemy. Who is that? Black Edit. Who is that? Black Edit? Who? Black, the guy. Who the hell is that? The guy with the voice changer. You've had interaction with him. Oh, God, so, that's a lot. That's Tariq, a fan. <laughs> I, need, I need your help. What do, you, what do you need? I need you to share some audio. To your page, I've never I've never asked you for anything, Tariq, but we have to discuss the radicalization of black people on the app. The way that this person Oh, but a lot of the But this that's an op that that dude is, that's a fed. That that dude is an op. So um, you don't want to help me? Yeah, no, so come on. <laughs> okay. Do it. Let me get some more. Let me get some more people in here. Lord, let's get um the average black guy. Let's get the average black guy in here. Average black guy, hop on. Average black guy, hop on, brother. Yeah, I tell you that. Uh, um, I was in the space. I heard that the little. She's already done played that audio. She played it with. So Luke played it for some reason. Man, there's been some weirdo stuff going on with a lot of them. And it's been some weird timing around a lot of this stuff. It's like it's all connected. And um, yeah, don't play that out here. I'm glad you didn't, because they're trying. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, they're trying to make us all out to be these. Uh, they're trying to make all black people, even FBA included in that. Like we somehow got something against them. And yeah, like you say, you called it. Black added is <laughs> a lot of Asian behavior. It's almost like yeah, my yeah. theory. They did that shit. It's, it's orchestrated. They did that to make him look a certain way representing us looking like us so they can say that we acting like a certain way so they can demonize us. Right. Right. That's they boy. Right. That's they boy. Yeah. That Real talk. Right there. That's a very good point. Thank you, brother. And that's the point. A, a lot of these folks on Twitter spaces, man, and some of these folks who be out at these rallies and stuff, these are ops. They go out here, they get paid to do real reckless stuff and say reckless stuff to make the whole community look janky. And we have to see them as such. That's why when I was out there in Oakland and all of them damn paid distractors and informants were all peppered in the audience, the people there already knew, hey, these are, these are agents, man. We already know these are agents. So what we do, we just ignore them. We don't even trip. Yeah, we just we don't even trip on them. We know that they're agents. We just play past it and we keep on doing what we do. Let's get um grinds in here. All right, let's get grinds. Let's get grinds in here. Grinds, hop on. What's up, brother Tariq? I'm good. Grinds, how are you, bro? I'm all right. Appreciate you. Yeah, we not. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that that goofy stuff between uh, Giselle and uh, Black Addict, that that's just a, a whole bunch of drama just to make us look bad because we're making so much progress with the reparations claim, which the reason why I got on here was to uh, ask you, are you familiar with the upcoming meeting tomorrow in Chicago um, for reparations? No, I'm not. Um, I'm not familiar with that. Where's that one happening? Okay, so it's in Chicago, uh, the city I'm in, um, at Malcolm X College. Uh, I believe it's like 5.30 or 6.30 for a couple of hours. Um, now, I and uh, Brother Afro Elite uh, was at um, a meeting about a month ago. Now, there's somebody that was a part of that meeting that I've known like years ago who ran for Alder. Uh, alderman a few times and uh, she's been known on the west side of Chicago on some activism stuff um, but what I what they did was they gave us a site to check out because 
the stuff sounded good, but then a few of us checked out the link to the site, and it looks like it's connected to Encobra. So, you know, with oh. uh, now, first of all, I appreciate your work and the solid people out west on the west coast that's been uh, making sure that the solid wording was used and not the word salad. So we know what to look out for yeah. on this end. Now, you know that there's an influx of um, uh, several immigrants coming in and the Woodline area yeah. of Chicago has been fighting against that, which which that's pretty good. Um, and they're making sure that we're not going for the bull. Now, they are trying to give uh, the immigrants, uh, illegal immigrants, 7000 a month. Uh, but yeah. the flyer um, for tomorrow's meeting, they talking about giving us seven. Now, I would say black America is seven hundred dollars a month. That's what's on the sheet. But the thing is, you know, with Incorpor being, you know, backing this thing up, you know, they're going to try to put. Uh, black immigrants in there as well so I particularly yes, did not are. say black Americans I said black people because they're trying to put them in on the uh, claim and we're not having it so anybody from Chicago yeah, right, y'all please gonna... be there tomorrow yeah. at Malcolm X College I want to say it starts like 530 or 630 uh, I'm about to repost the uh, flyer in a few minutes uh, just in case you are going there to look no doubt thank you so much brother but yeah watch out for the in Cobra stuff uh, where the average black guy? Somebody just sent me a picture. Average, average black guy. The um, that that op dude. There's a picture that you posted. Is that that dude for real? <laughs> Is that him? Is that a real picture, of old dude, man? That that picture is hilarious. Average black guy. Is that is that really old dude? Hold on, let me get the average black guy in here. Average black guy. Is that dude for real? <laughs> That uh, that's him from like quite a few people. Plus, he's pretty angry about it, and uh, he's going off on a lot of people. And whenever I say his name anywhere, he pops up, right? But this picture that got the most likes and the most play, he ain't saying a damn thing. And I heard dude from Milwaukee, and he's just, and he's Zimbabwean, and we've been. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say nothing to that. When he see me, he start popping off, and so yeah, it's. It's up for him. One last thing I forgot to tell you, too. Uh, for some reason, Isaiah Washington is in spaces with him and some other dude. All of a sudden, they cozy. Then the next day, T.S. Giselle's in that space with Luke playing audio from Old Boy. And the timing is just really suspicious. Yeah. Oh, um, God, man. These are oppy as hell. But, yeah, if that's him, that's funny as hell. It is. That is hilarious. That, that dude looks like a Zimbabwean goat herder or some shit. But man, all right. Thank you for the call. Damn, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Let me get um. I'm gonna get um. Uh, who is this guy? Hitch slap. Let me get hitch slap in. Then I get Afro in here in a minute. Hitch slap. What's up, man? Hitch slap. You can turn your microphone on. Hey, what's up, Tori? What's going on? You're the same. You sound like one of the same guys. But what's on your mind? Oh, uh, no, I don't, I've um. Uh, I just literally jumped into space about three minutes ago, so I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> um, and I just jumped up and said, good day. I'm a big fan of yours. You've got some uh, very interesting things to say. So I thought I'd just pop in and say hi. And also shout out Reups in the listeners. Um, <clears throat> I can highly recommend uh, bringing him up next. He's a very stellar young man. Reups, what's his name? Yeah, Reups in the listeners. Uh, you got Reups, Holistic, and uh, George. Uh, three very uh, fair and reasonable people that I've uh, spoken to quite often. Now, where are you from with that accent? Where are you from? Um, I've got Italian ancestry, but uh, I was born and raised in Australia. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All thank right. Let's get Dr. Benoit. All right. Let's get Dr. Benoit in here. Hop in, Dr. Benoit. All Hello. Right. What's going on, Dr. Benoit? I am doing very well. How are you? I'm good. What's on your mind? Well, you know, I wanted to say that I'm a big fan of your theology. I'm a double PhD. I got a degree from Oxford. And, you know, I just want to say that I wish to pay my respects. And I have one question for you. Uh oh, here we go. Uh -oh, uh oh, the white supremacists are being freaky as they do. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Sorry about that, guys. The white supremacists, you know, they have to do the bug-breaking thing. 
Lord. Okay, let me remove all of their filth. Okay. Yeah. You know how they do. They're just being, that's, that's their culture. They don't know no better. That's what they do. That's what the movie Buck Breaking was about. They, it's, it always go to the bussy. Everything. <laughs> All roads lead to bussy. <laughs> With these white supremacists, it goes all the way back to the damn bussy. Okay, got to get these guys up out of here. Okay. So, let me get some more folks in here. And and, and when the bussy pictures start coming up, T.S. Giselle pop right back in, huh? (laughs) Oh, Lord. Let me me get Afro Elite in here. Let me get my brother Afro in here. Afro Elite. Let me get Afro in here. I hear you, brother. What's going on? Um, I wanted to briefly talk about what our brother Grimes was talking about. Uh, shout out to him. I met him in person. Solid brother. But oh, good. Um, apparently, and I checked the schedule today, they have pushed it back. It was supposed to be on the 17th, but now the event is on the 24th. They literally changed it oh. today. So I just want everybody to know that. Oh, wow. But to to piggyback off of what he was talking about a lot of the the stuff was kind of funny style based off of the conversation because I talked to her a little bit before the event. I talked to her on the phone and then we had the event. Everything was going good. She said she liked everybody. She was going to call us, let us know. Um, never reached out to anybody, never reached out, never said anything about setting up. Make She wanted us to be a part of the team completely ignored us all the way up until this day. And it's almost been like a month since then. What I'm predicting what they're doing now is because the reparations conversation is becoming a national thing. What they were talking about in the meeting is starting a whole bunch of committees so they can quote unquote discuss reparations. And then they ask for like state funding, city funding, federal funding. So it's going to be a whole lot of this stuff pop up where they are asking the mayor for funding for office supplies and speakers and stuff like this. So it seems like it's kind of like a in Cobra. It, it's a lot of mixed stuff going. It was a lot of red flags and I wasn't trying to be yeah. rude, but it was a lot of red flags going on with this, but it's pretty much them setting something up so they can get some funding on behalf of quote unquote advocating for reparations. That's kind of what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. But I'm gonna look more into it, man. But thank you so much, brother. Yeah, we got again. You got to watch that whole in Culver crowd, man. Yeah, their their job is to to pan Africanize everything and then basically open the door for other non Black immigrants. That's their whole job. They're just shields and front people for the Democrats. They're doing the bidding of the Democrats, just point blank. Let's get um. What we got? Let's. Let me see. Look at this Cam guy. I haven't I? Okay, Cam. I've had you on before, Cam. Hop on, Cam. Let's make it quick and no vulgarities. You're going to get out of here real quick. Cam, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I ain't going to say nothing crazy. But All right, so what's on your mind? Oh, I just want to say that the lady who was speaking about Biden, she mentioned the shade room, but the shade room is. The social media, them and baller alerts. I don't know why she brought up the shade room. Right, right. Yeah, that yeah, that was weird. That was very weird. Yeah, they they cape for Biden more than anybody. But you know, yeah. that is all right. But thank you so much, Cam. Right, thank you, thank brother. you, thank you. All right. Oh, right. I'm not gonna be out here too too long because I got to get upstairs and attend to my wife. I got to take care of some of her needs. You, you feel me? <laughs> That's what I got to do. Snowfall. Hop in, Snowfall. I think I've talked to you before. You one of these white supremacist trolls? Oops, he jumped out of here. Oh, Snowfall, hop on. Snowfall. Oh, there we go. Somebody was giving the thumbs up. They were like, hey, don't put him on. That's right. Uh, that's right. You're right. Yep, somebody gave the, the the thumbs down, like, oh, don't put him on. And sure enough, it's Bussy Central. Okay. 
while we're getting the bussy pictures out of here. Get T.S. Giselle back in here. T.S., what's going on? What's going on, T.S.? I'm upset with you, Tariq. Now, you, I am, what did I do? Because I am T.S. Giselle. You, Are you upset because I'm taking the bussy pics down? Or what, what, what are you upset I, No, that's absolutely disgusting. Because you only gave me five seconds. Tariq, you know I okay, give go you ahead. content. When you mention my name oh, on your YouTube lives, you have hundreds of people that reference the TS. Your fans love me. It, okay. All right. Anyway, I'm still awaiting my VIP tickets for the FBA Expo. I think that my appearance would just take the event to another level. Um. Yeah. Yeah. If I'll, I'll let you know we booked Kevin Campbell and we can do a meet and greet or something for you. You know, we'll, we'll make that happen. But. But, um, you know, we want to make you safe. And I, if anybody's threatening you, that ain't cool. Whoever's threatening you. Whoever's threatening you, I think it might just be some oppy stuff. I think it's some ops. But I, that, nobody, I, should, nobody should be talking about harming you. If you want bussy, you get your bussy in peace. But go ahead. Thank you for that, Tariq. That's all that I've wanted is for people to understand that it's not okay for black people to threaten to murder other black people. Now, so black people you. really don't do that. It, you know, it, I'm not speaking yeah. on I'm only speaking on the one person that threatened me but that means yeah. a lot for you to make that statement to read so I hope that you can right. share that we want you to be safe. It, nobody, nobody should be bothering you yeah nobody, nobody should be bothering you you should be safe to do what you want to do you know Thank so you, you be safe but don't be and, and, and we don't want y'all out here catfishing dudes, and we don't want y'all putting yourselves in certain situations. T.S. Giselle you know doesn't have to. T.S. Giselle does not have to catfish any man. I know because they already can tell, but um, a lot of they people can't. Know, they, they no, they can't. can't. They already somebody's there with you. They they know what they're getting into. They, they if they go they to your, if they go to your if they go to your restaurant, they know dick and balls are on the menu. They already know what's going to be on the menu. There's no surprise snacks in the place, but they, 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 um, don't. they shouldn't. Oh, Listen, okay, okay, all right. T.S. Giselle <laughs> serves pink pussy, okay, <laughs> like Beyonce. Bad bitches to the right, money bitches to the left. You can do both. Uh, did you, you did it's you mean pure. pink penis? Did you mean pink penis? Period. You serve pink penis. Okay, okay. all right. Do you? Tip, All right, tip, you mean... tip on hardwood floors. Glitter on my kitty. Okay, you mean purple Period. penis instead of... All right, all right, that's enough. That's enough of that. Thank you so much. Anyway, I thank just you. wanted... Th I... Thank you, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. <sighs> he meant purple penis. He didn't mean pink pussy. All right. Lord. Okay, let's... let's Dr. Feel Good. Let's get Dr. Feel Good in here. What's up, man? Feel Dr. Feeling, I think that's your name. I'm not sure what it is. Well, what's up, brother? What's up, my brother Tyreek? Man, what's going on with everybody in the room today? I have man. a conundrum going on. What's this up, boy man? Sir Major's talking about calling the FBI on people, bro. What's up with oh, your who? boy Sir Major? Um, calling what what happened? Well, he got into well, somebody got into it with T.S. Giselle and they made death threats to her saying we should go kill them and all that. And Sir Major was like, man, we should call the FBI on this brother. And I'm just I don't know what's going on, man. OK, I don't know anything about that, man. Yeah, there's so much you stuff going on on Twitter spaces. I, so I don't know what's going on with these Twitter spaces. Um, so let me see, who is this person here? Let me see. Make sure they don't throw no bussy picks up. What's up, um, Holistic or whatever your name is? Yeah, Tariq, what's up? Uh, so my question is, is about a documentary you did many years ago, uh, Congressional Pimp, uh, one of my favorites, where you had a booty call with Miss Bernadette Booty, and you would humiliate these politicians. And my question is, why mm -hmm. did you uh, show the transfer over from humiliating politicians to humiliating your own people with this bug breaking stuff? Because I feel like that documentary is highly underrated. Just my opinion, though. Well, that doesn't humiliate us. That talks about your culture. Well, yeah, yeah. It's That's about like your you're culture. You're about getting uh, penetrated, like in the bud and stuff. Like, it's just kind of like humiliating for you. No, no. So, just uh, my opinion. no, no. That's for you. yeah. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. That's why you're that. That's where the anger is from because the movie Buck Breaking broke down 
white supremacist culture coming out of Europe, that's where you guys are humiliated. That's We did a whole documentary about your long history of butt play. Y'all been about that since y'all crawled out of Europe, many of you white supremacists. And the minute you got in, got in contact with non-white people, it was butt play time. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, we can't stop getting enslaved. Yeah, 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 right, 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 right. So, yeah, yeah. So that movie, Butt Breaking, was a huge hit, by the way. I noticed a lot of the white supremacists were very offended by that movie because you're not really used to people breaking down your culture. Everything is all about everybody else. Y'all analyze and break down everybody else. We broke your culture down all the way to the caves, then to Greco-Roman society, the stuff y'all do in Rome and Greece, and then the the white Arabs. We got into some of the, the stuff that they do and what happened, Alexander the Great and his bussy fascinations, and then some of the slave owners, what they were doing. We broke all of that stuff down with documented facts. So, yeah, exposing that part of your culture, y'all really didn't like that. So that's where the trolling comes in. See, trolling is you guys trying to mask the pain. Isn't that right? No, I don't think any of that is true. Do you believe that black baby no. or what? What was one? Has... No, no, no. Stop it. Stop. What was inaccurate about Buck breaking the movie? Name one thing that was inaccurate. Yeah, not a single black person or slave has ever been raped by a white person, um, as you state. If you don't stop it, really, are you going to try to say that with a straight face that slaves were not being raped? How do you think all of these? Well, first, let's we can start with the women. We know that the women were being raped because of the offspring that popped off. You think that those white supremacist slave owners weren't doing that to the black boys too? No, that was consensual. And as we know, white how people is black. that consent? How 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 does a slave consent, sir? Because they were unable to feed themselves without someone providing them with a job and a work in a in a society of orderliness. So that's basically the explanation. That doesn't make any sense, sir. A slave doesn't consent. Why not? By def- because you're a slave. Some people like being slaves. What's wrong with that? Okay, this is white supremacist gibberish, which further proves my point. You guys cannot logically defend your degenerate culture of white supremacist sodomy and warfare. You can't even defend it. You have to troll babble and mayo explain, sir. So that proves my point. But anyway, thank you so much. And Buck Breaking 2 is going to be coming soon. We're going to start working on that pretty soon. <clears throat> so y'all going to be real double mad. We're going to break some more stuff down about your culture. But well, they hate when their culture is being broken down. They hate it. All right, now who is this? Um, Okay, this guy has um, Daniel Penny's face on his profile, so we already know what his get down is. Uh, Right? Um, The white racial racial consciousness. Okay, let's hear that. Let me hear some racial consciousness. Fleck Arthur, the hop on. Yeah, did it hurt when you were buck broke? All right, y'all, you came in corny. All right, and you're out. Let me get you out of here. Because I don't want, I'm not trying to hear cornball nonsense. At least have your jokes funny. You're going to get immediately blocked. If you don't, if you try to troll and you're trolling this corny, immediate block. All right, let's get um, Destino. Let's get Destino in here. We're doing immediate blocks. We don't we don't want to hear cornball trolling. Trolling has to be funny. Either be logical or be funny. But you will not be a cornball and an unfunny troll. But go ahead. Destino. <clears throat> Destino. Hop on and turn your microphone on. All right. And Let's get um, 1995. 1995, hop in. 
1995, hop in, man. Yo, yo, what up, Reek? What's good with you, my man? I'm good. What's on? What's on your mind, bro? Yeah, blessed and highly favored, brother. Um, yeah, you know what? There was um, uh, I know we had talked about it, like American Cholo and stuff like that. But did you uh, recently see you know uh, the stuff that he was complaining about as far as the whole uh, uh about uh what WAC 100 said about him uh saying about some anti Mexicans and stuff like that? No, I don't know. I don't watch. I don't watch Trollo at all. But what happened? Well, I guess um, Wax supposedly he had, he had said some things about uh, uh, oh about Mexicans and things like that. But uh, but then you have American Trollo on here had called you a ghetto coon and things like that. So we already know right. what his get down is. But he got something to say. Okay, uh, I don't man. It's all over the place. So I don't even know, man. All right, but let me get some more folks in here. Man, a lot of that shit I don't be keeping up with. All right, let's get Mo. All right, let's get Mo. M O H Mo. What's going on, Tariq? How are you? I'm good, Mo. What's on your mind, Mo? Yeah, man. So, um, obviously, you built a really good platform for yourself, and you you found your niche. And honestly, it's really inspiring. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm 24, and I'm also trying to make it right. So. Um, I was wondering for any guys that are in their early to mid twenties, uh, what are some habits they should adopt? So by the time they're, um, you know, a few years later, they, they basically, they're established. Now, it depends on what you want to do. What are you trying to do with yourself? Uh, so for me, I'm a day trader and eventually I kind of want to start my own thing where uh, people can learn off me as well. Um, I'm also, I also have a podcast that I'm really trying to expand. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, what you got to do, man, you got to get the mentor game popping. Get around some people who are thorough. Get around some veterans and hang around them. Uh, don't worry about getting paid because a lot of times we start hanging around people and we think we should get the same damn money they get. You better sit around some people and get some game. Get around some folks who's doing better than you or doing what you want to do and learn some game. The game from them is more valuable than the crumbs that they might flick off to you. Find you a veteran. Y'all don't understand the importance of finding a veteran and just being an apprentice to a certain degree. Just being around somebody, soaking up some game from them, watching how they handle business, watching who they connect with, how they make their connections. That's the most valuable thing. The thing is, and dudes should really peep this type of stuff because what happens is dudes get around a, a person who's bawling out and then you want to act like a bitch. You try to act like the chicks be acting. Now, the women, yeah, the women are vying for attention. The women are showing a little titty here. The women are trying to get a bag from the dude. The woman ain't trying to get into his industry. She's looking at the dude trying to get with him. Because if she can throw that thing right, she's going to get some of that paper anyway. So she's trying to get herself positioned to be possibly wifey or something. Or a cool ass side piece or just a baby mama. At least the baby mama can get papered up. So a dude... With that type of mentality, he doesn't have anything to bring to the table. So a, a dude with that whole mentality, he's trying to angle for some kind of finesse. And that's the wrong way to look at hanging around and being around somebody who's balling out. That's why a lot of people who are balling out or who are successful, they like being around other people who are on their level because they don't have people trying to sabotage or undermine or trying to flip a bag out of them. You understand? So people who are in certain positions of success and they have certain um, financial power, they like people who are around them who are trying to learn the game because they see that there's a purpose to this person and they don't mind giving you some game. The game is for those who are worthy of receiving the game. So a person who's in a certain position, if they see that you're really hungry for some of the knowledge, you'd be surprised how much game somebody will give you. So we have to start going in situations like that, getting around people who can serve us some game. Like my thing, one person that I would love to meet, I would just love to be in this in a room with this cat for like an hour. That's Al Heyman, the famous promoter who's real low key. He's been a, um, a promoter and a businessman since the 70s. I used to hear Al Heyman's name all the time for concerts, the Budweiser Superfest, all that stuff. And he promotes a lot of the stuff for um, our brother um, Floyd Mayweather. And 
the brother Al Heyman, this brother makes money hand over fist. He's real low key. Don't nobody even know what he looks like for the most part. He don't do, do interviews, but he's one of the most successful promoters in the world. That's the dude I would like to be in a room with just soaking up game. I'd be in there with a pen and pencil soaking up game left and right. And I, I still got a little financial success, but let me see somebody who's balling more than me. I'm all ears. I don't try to front, try to high side nothing. I can humble myself and get a pen and paper and start jotting shit down and learning some game. You know who does that? Who's real good at learning game from people? Our brother, Nick Cannon. Nick is very good at that. That's why he's so successful. Nick will pull out a pen and paper and start writing. If you talk to Nick and just say something real fly, Nick will pull out a piece of paper and a pen and start writing the shit down. I've had, I was, um, had a conversation with Nick one time. He's like, oh, shit, that's deep. And pulled out some paper and start writing it down. I'm like, all right. I'm not even mad at him. He's, he's, he's getting game. That's how you're supposed to be. Somebody drops something fly, you, you take something from that. You, you get a life lesson out of that. That's how you build and grow. Yeah. So that's very important, man. Just respecting somebody's position and humbling yourself and not letting the jealous thing get in. Cause we got too many dudes who think like his O's, man, you get around a nigga and you think you are supposed to have what that dude has. You didn't grind like that dude. You didn't hustle like that dude. You weren't getting up early in the morning like that dude. You think just because you standing next to him, you are supposed to have what he has. And you better understand this. This is another thing when it comes to hanging with people and being around people. If you are a person who's balling out, you better make sure you are hanging with people who are either balling equally as you or people trying to learn from you. Because what happens is if you balling out and you hang in with some of the, the homies who ain't really trying to learn no game and they just hang in because y'all knew each other or that y'all were cool with each other back in the day, but they ain't trying to upgrade, them niggas will pull your shit all the way back down. Look at Jaws' ass, the, the basketball player. Look how that dude is acting. Look how Jaws acting. He's out here with his homies who ain't got nothing to lose. He already got hemmed up getting on um, social media, waving a gun around, got suspended, got punished for doing it, and then went and did it again with them same little dusty niggas from his neighborhood waving a gun. Dude, look, look. And like I said the other day on my broadcast, I could co-sign Ja doing that if he was doing it as an advocate for the Second Amendment because he does have a right to wave his gun around. But if you're just being goofy and just waving your gun around just to be reckless and there's no rhyme and reason and you're just trying to show out with your homies, that's a dumb reason to lose a bag. You're losing a major bag by hanging with your homies, doing something goofy, rapping to mumble rap. That ain't worth losing a bag for. You understand? That's not worth losing no bag for and, and sabotaging your career. To hang with goofy, dusty niggas, listen to mumble rap, waving a fucking gun? No. And those dudes that you hang with, man, these dudes, they'll egg you on because they want you to fall back down to the bricks with them. They don't mind that. So they can clown. So they can do you like they did our brother Hammer. They sit up and try to shame you into doing something and shame you to into let's keep it real, man. You got to keep it real. Come back to the hood. Wave his gun. Show everybody that you, you still down. No. No, that's a nigga who's trying to sabotage you. You know what a real dude would, would do? Somebody in the, the hood, back in the day, what they would do, you see somebody who was balling out, you're like, man, get, get up out of here, bro. Man, you don't need to be hanging here. If we saw somebody with potential, somebody who was about to really blow up or somebody who had blown up, say, hey, man, we love you, we respect you, but get out of here. Don't, don't be hanging around here with that. No, man, you need to go, you know, you don't need to be over here. We don't want you getting caught up. You then That's what you would say to him, man. Like, we don't need you. We need you to stay on top of your game so that you can pull some of us up there with you. Don't be down here doing this nigga stuff. Don't do that. 
stay in in the position you're in, bro, and and um, let us know what we can do to to come up to your level and kind of help out with management or whatever. We can do little job positions on that level. We can do security. We can do whatever. But yeah, don't you be down here mumble rapping and waving a gun with us on the bricks. Nah. So we got to start getting these priorities right. Let's get a couple of more people in here because I am not, I said I ain't going to be on here long and I always say that and I end up on here a long time chopping it up with the family. And by the way, family, I hope you guys got those brand new FBA flags, those Black Power flags that everybody's loving. We got the Black Power FBA flags. People are loving on them flags at officialfba.com. Officialfba.com, ladies and gentlemen, that's where you can get yours. And um, you can also get your tickets for the FBA Expo at fbaexpo.com. Let's get...